Here we go. David Flip in the house. Flip, flip. Um, all right. Mr. So, uh, how you doing? Yeah, so everybody, welcome to Trade School Consulting. Uh, before we get started, please, as usual, subscribe to the channel, hit that like button and the, uh, the bell button so you can get notified whenever we have new videos come out on the channel. Uh, today, we are talking with Mr. David Flipping and uh, uh, FNS Power Washing. So, uh, Flip, tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of introduce yourself to the people that don't already know you, and uh, tell us a little bit about your business. Okay. Uh, thank you, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, David Flipping, a.k.a. Mr. Flip, as they call me, uh, proud owners of uh, FNS Power Washing, along with my lovely wife, Charlene. Um, we started this part of our business uh, back in January of 2017. Uh, currently have uh, two rigs, two flatbeds that we use. Um, we've actually been in the commercial business of cleaning interior since uh, 1999, actually. Dude, that's a long time. So when did y'all when did y'all decide to go from interior to exterior? Uh, you know, David, how this, how, how this all came about was um, back in, we moved, I moved my family from Middletown, Delaware. When we moved here in Delaware, it was in 01, 2001. We got down to Lewis, Delaware in 08. Um, we had our house washed uh, by a, a company. I had never seen, all the years of being in business, we had never used a rig I, I didn't even know what they were. I'd never seen a surface cleaner um, until we hired this company to come out and wash our house. And the guy dropped his trailer off and he had a, he, which I know what it is now, it was a soft wash system, 12 volt pump, and he applied the solution. And then he, he would use a, uh, just a regular pressure washer with a green tip and rinse it off. So he did a, to be honest, the, the company just did a bad job. They actually oxidized our home. And because we didn't know what those streaks were on our siding, he told us the son did it. Well, you know, Miss Flip was upset at that point. We didn't know what it was. We, about two years later, we hired him again to clean our windows, interior and exterior, did a bad job. So right around, if you remember, right around 20, 2016, the economy started to tank. And uh, we had to shift into a, uh, a new business plan. Uh, so I went to Miss Flip and I said, listen, I think we may want to, you know, we're gonna start to lose business with restaurant cleaning. Uh, let's shift into, you know, let's shift our model. So I contacted a company, Atlantic Pressure Washing, uh, mid, mid-year 2016 uh, out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland, spoke to one of the reps. She suggested that I, if I want to get into power washing, exterior cleaning, get on some of the Facebook forums and get yourself educated to see what the guys are doing before you even get into this. So I logged in, took about six months, went through it. Um, we were actually saving our money to put a four season sunroom on the back of, the, of our home. And by December, 2016, you know, we decided, okay, I think we may want to buy a rig. We had, now we knew what they were. We'd seen them. We found a guy, he had a rig for sale. I, he was coming out of, uh, out of Indiana. I had family in Columbus, Ohio. So January uh, 25th, 2017, we drove, we bought the, our Silverado, drove out to Ohio. He met me at my family home, did a demo in the rain. I had never seen a rig. I didn't know how to start it up. And we, Charlene and I, trailered that rig back to Delaware in the pouring down rain. We paid $8,500 for it. He was my mentor for my first three years because I, I knew nothing about it. And so our goal, our plan was, we were already power washing uh, sidewalks and loading docks 
for those restaurants. We had 26 Applebee's that we were managing, we were cleaning uh, between Delaware and New Jersey. So Charlene and I's idea was, okay, let's buy a rig and we will do the power washing. Because we had, when we got into Applebee's after five years, we started to farm and we still contracted that work out. We were doing well. So we weren't the ones cleaning it. We were just getting the money, paying the contractors. But when they started to pull the work back, we thought we could buy a rig and then drive around all these restaurants and clean these sidewalks. Well, we went to the first one and the high pressure line broke. We didn't even know where to get it fixed. That's how much we did not know about the, the, these, this piece of equipment. And uh, so, you know, we started to figure it out. The guy I bought it from, Chris Dobbs, continued to mentor me. I was able to call him up. And uh, all of a sudden I looked up and I said, wait a minute, you know, we could, we don't have to go all the way up to an Applebee's 30 miles from our home for a little bit of money. We weren't gonna make any money doing that. We figured that out real quick. So we had no marketing plan. We didn't, we didn't, you know, we, we were old school. We didn't have any shirts, website, we didn't have that. We, we were just, we would do it, it was all word of mouth for us. We were not computer gurus, man. We didn't come up in that era. And so, um, so what we did was I washed my neighbor's home. I washed my house, my next door neighbor, and two of my neighbors across the street. And there was, there's a local app, I'm sure, in everybody's community called Next Door. They, my neighbors, put a reference, a referral, said, hey, contact FNS. Uh, they did a great job on our house. And all of a sudden, by May, we started April 1st, 2017, doing my neighbor's homes. By May, our phone was ringing off the hook and we didn't even have a website or any, anything like that. It was just word of mouth. Um, and we, we took off, we looked up and, and I mean, my God, May was full, but we didn't even have, we, I had QuickBooks. We were handwriting uh, estimates. We had no way to track, we didn't know. And so um, we were just kind of thumbing it. We had insurance, we all that we had, we didn't have workers comp, but you know, we were already insured from, you know, being in business so many years, but that's how FNS was born. So, so. that's crazy. Um, I mean, just out of, out of sheer need after you had bought the rig to, to try to find some place in your business for this equipment to, to start making you some type of revenue. Yeah. You're, so at this point, you, you have an idea that this is going to work. You got word of mouth going for you. Your schedule is yeah. starting to fill up. How in, in depth are you at pressure washing at this point? And um, when is it that it finally hits you that like, this is, this is legitimate enough. We need to figure out how to track these estimates. We need to start sending out some invoices. Where was your first CRM? When did all that kind of come together? All right. The first CRM came together by August 2017. Okay. So okay. What plan. happened was, uh, I start, I was, after we started watching it first, how we were X jetting at that time. That's the way when we bought the rig, it was set up to X jet. Okay. Um, we went to, Charlene sent us to a house around the corner from us in the neighborhood. Um, and she took the wrong address down. We wound up at the wrong house. We, we had already cleared off the back porch and we went to turn the water on. And I said, Charlene, there's no water. So she calls the homeowner and, uh, cause he, he didn't live there full time. And he says, no, you're at the wrong house. <laughs> So I said to Charlene, I said, listen, I think we're going to need this CRM program. That's how it happened. Because she didn't want us, she was like, no, we don't want to pay $35 a month for the CRM. We don't need that. And, I, and here we are, we, were, we typed it. It was human error. And that's how we, that's when we went with the customer factor. Um, yeah, all, a lot of what we've been learning um, in the beginning, up until we went to school, uh, October 2017, was all through going on Facebook, watching what others were doing. And then, so we started to track um, through the CRM 
And then we had to figure out how to integrate the customer factor through QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, but again, we had no website. Uh, we did have uniforms, but this was not the official logo. We have more of a cartoon logo at that time. Okay. Um, when, when I started to get feedback from the customers after we've, after we had completed the job, that's when I, it started to hit me like, wait a minute, I think, I think we're grabbing on to something here. Um, I can tell you when you talk about branding your company, you know, there's, there's probably multiple ways to brand your business. One of the best ways that I found to brand our company was my name. My name is David, but there's, that's just a common name. Folks won't remember that. They do remember Flip. So a lot of the older generation would say, oh my God, what a unique name. I remember Flip Wilson. So I said, oh, well, I mean, we need to, you know, we need to roll with this. And so we start that, was the nickname that I've had for so many years took off here. Folks would say, hey, you need to call Flip. It was so easy for them to say that, and then they knew who it was. They could put the two or two together. And so that's how we, you know, got it rolling. Once we got it rolling, that's when I went to school. I started to go to school. I was uh, part of the uh, UAMCC at the time. I joined that. Um, but my first training actually was February 2017, Jay Racenstein. I got on Facebook, uh, David, uh, and I made the, the honest mistake of showing uh, the guys in, in one of the Facebook groups, uh, my next door neighbor's house. And I said, okay, guys, I got my rig. How do you clean this house? What's, you know, what's the steps? And they, I mean, I got shredded. Go to school, get a mentor, don't touch that house, right? So I, I walked upstairs. I was in my man cave, man, in my house. I walked upstairs, my lips down. I'm upset, right? And, but those guys, in the end, those guys were right. I, I enrolled in school with Jay Racenstein for three days, stayed up there. I got my initial training. And after that, I was hooked. The training got me hooked. I said, I think I can do this. So um, that's in February of what year? 2017. 2017. And then October of 2017, you go to another training event, right? Absolutely. So by October 2017, we found ourselves uh, with, you know, following the Power Watch store, Paul Cassander, I think Raymond Burke was a part of that at the time, um, and the UAMCC. So we flew down there. I had never been to Florida in my life. Uh, here I am in Orlando, Florida. We stayed a week, and we went to their national convention. Had an awesome time. Learned a lot, right? I'm going in and out of class. I'm going to class. Charlene now, she's, uh, she's still laying in the bed. She's on vacation mode. Okay. Um, and I really just started to like, I started to, you know, really get into this. I'm like, man, this is a nice business. Um, I, and then we went and we bought, uh, we bought a, um, we, we started to expand our business. We, we bought a, a Perry Traits, a uh, small exterior window clean setup to get into that. I bought a booster. Skid, water dragon skid, three quarter horsepower booster. I bought the whole skid. I'm like, man, I had, I didn't know where I was going to put it on. When they delivered it to the house, it was sitting in the garage. I didn't know what to do with it because my trailer was full. Um, I didn't even know how to use it. I'm like, oh man, this thing's nice. Um, and once I, once I bought it, um, we by, by, by twenty. 17 by 2018 we have put it we bought a flatbed and had a flatbed set up and put that skid on but i had to figure out how to use it so uh 20 january of 2018 um i uh went back to tampa to school and sat with tim asselton and said listen can you teach me how to 
use this booster because I knew nothing about it. And I bought him breakfast and we sat there and he showed me, taught me how to use that booster, man. So what does your rig look like at this point? You, um, what, what kind of pressure washing machines were you guys working with? What, you, you've changed your, your soft wash from a, a 12 volt to a booster. Um, what do you got on this new flatbed that you just put? Yeah, with? yeah. so both of our trucks, uh, residential, commercial, both of them have uh, boosters uh, and combination and 12 volts, the way we set them up, okay? So the, uh, the black flatbed, which is our, mainly our residential, that has a uh, three-quarter horsepower booster that runs off of a, either house electric or uh, the Honda generator, the quiet Honda generator. Um, and then we also have a backup 12 volt. Sometimes we just don't want to run the booster. The guys can just, it's easier for them to just use the 12 volt. Um, when we got into the commercial truck, the business started to really take off. We started getting calls for um, uh, more commercial work. That's when we had the larger uh, flatbed built. Now that has the uh, Pro Cube, one horsepower Pro Cube. That's a modified, so um, high flow proportioner. Both trucks have proportioners on them, um, and that and the white the, the uh, commercial truck has a high flow, but it also has a backup 12 volt pump, separate pump system on them. How, how, um, well, how well do you like the 12 volt? What, what situations do you find that it's really useful in? And then what situations do you find that it's just not strong enough? And what do you, you like the, I'm, I'm assuming you like the booster. I know that you want a gas pump at, at my convention. I don't know if you guys have used that yet, but what, what's your, what's your out, outlook on, on pumps? All right. If, if you're, for me, this is just my honest opinion. If, if, if you're, the boosters are very temperamental. Okay. You know, when they, when they lose prime, get some air in there. Uh, when you're hiring employees, they don't take the time to, they really don't know the booster. So I, I, I found that that is a complicated system. If you're having employees, the 12 volt pump, that's why we went on and installed the 12 volts because it was just much simpler. We tied them, we tied the 12 volt pumps into the proportioner, which made it easy. So we're, we're still, we're not batch missing, but it's easy for them just to turn the pump on, runs off a battery. The difference is, you know, if we catch a windy day, um, uh, you need, that's when you need the booster. Now the booster obviously will outperform on any given day, the, the 12 volt. But if you're, if you're, if we're just doing residential homes, two story, even sometimes three, uh, we would use, we will use the um, 12 volt first because we rinse with our, with the separate pressure washer anyway. But the booster, that, that takes a little bit more training. So what we're going to do this year, we're going to buy, we're going to purchase a booster in a box. Okay, already set up with, uh, so we're gonna have a three quarter horsepower booster in a box with a pro switch, with a proportioner and a couple of small tanks. When we hire new techs, we're going to train them on that system right in the shop. And then they can also wash the trucks with that system when they, when they come in from work. Okay, so it'll serve a dual purpose, but it's, it's easier to just show guys right there in the shop when we start doing some our heavy duty training. So have you, um, just out of curiosity, have y'all gotten to use the gas roof pump yet? Not yet. We're going to, uh, over the winter, we are going to put together a uh, recovery trailer. Okay. Um, and that's where we're going to put this new system in that we want graciously won at, at your convention. So thanks again. Um, we're, we get, we, we do a lot of work with, uh, paper cleaning and restoration. Uh, um, and so we're going to get a recovery system, uh, when we go to, to extract some of that polymeric sand from the joints and, uh, discharge it either back into the tank or, you know, out into the lawn or where have you on that and that system. That it, what was that the uh, AR was it the AR thirty six or forty five I think but yeah so that's 
So you're going to put that on there with the recovery unit? Yeah, that's going to be on the recovery unit. Because, you know, when you start to expand, what I find is, uh, you know, when one truck goes down, you've you got to have a backup. So that's, that's where that uh, system is going to go. Um, and we're going to have a need for that because from what I'm seeing uh, about those uh, pumps, the, what is it, the, uh, the P40s, uh, you get a lot of volume, a lot of height. You try to keep the guys off of ladders. I mean, we're, we're doing pretty good with that. But uh, look, we clean some hotels, you know, four stories high. Um, in some cases, we had to get lifts for those. And now we may not have to. So, so let's go back to um, talking about, you know, you're going through some trainings at this point. It's about 2018. And you guys have really gotten your foothold in, in pressure washing. You kind of have an idea of what your identity is going to be at this point. Um, where, what kind of marketing did you guys do after you kind of got your foothold in there to really take off and start hiring employees and things of that nature to keep you consistently busy? Yeah. Okay. So next, next door, the app next door was working pretty good for us. Right. Um, we didn't have a website. Um, we were not, I, I had a business card. I was going door to door, but I, I'm going to tell you right now, David, um, when we got started in 2017, uh, I'm fumbling through words. I didn't know, you know, what to say to the customer. I'm knocking on the door. I, I didn't have a sales pitch. Okay. Never did this. I had, a, I had a, another mentor of mine who lives 60 miles north of me. And he says, listen, he says, flip did you have a website yet? And I said, nah, man, we're on the website. He says, man, look, I'm going to pay you to build this website. You need to get a website out there, right? So I get back on Facebook again. Uh, lo and behold, I find a young lady who was doing some freelance work out of uh, Chicago. She came by way of referral. Because, you know, you type out there and say, hey, I need somebody to build me a, a website. She was God sent. When, when, uh, when I introduced myself to her. She could do things that I just couldn't do, man. Very smart, very talented. She built our first website. She uh, married the website. She handled the SEO, but let me tell you, even when she built a website, handled our SEO, I didn't even know what kind of budget to use. So I said $300 a month, okay? So she did, um, we launched it. Uh, she tied the, um, uh, she integrated uh, the website, and, and, you know, to our CRM. Um, we, uh, I would say, in somewhere in 2017, we we got hooked on, hooked up with uh, Sengen. Okay, that was big. So we went on and paid a lifetime membership. But here's the thing, David, we didn't know how to use it. We had it. And me and Ms. Flip, we did not know how to use Send Gym, man. And I'm like, so there was just a lot of things in the beginning. We had the tools, but we needed to bring someone in to help, to help us, okay? Once we brought Kira on, our freelance, that's when we started, we saw the next growth. She was able to uh, team up with a guy that she knew to help develop the cards that we need at certain parts of the season for gutter cleaning, window cleaning. Um, we started to learn how to radius bomb. Uh, I would go out, I would give her an address. We started, I started to target, um, it was, stay what happened for me quick. Okay, so what happened, I would get a call and I would go to say, um, homes that were more high end and I would land the job. And then I would give, I would take the address, give it to our marketer, our freelance, and she would radius bomb the area, okay? She figured it all out. Um, we, we got sophisticated with our CRM program where we, we started to put in our estimates, we had pre-filled pre out information where before I would just type and it, you know, if I went to your house exterior wise to include it, would, the message was always different. So I would sit, I would come back home, stay a lot of late nights 
and I would just tell them, say, hey, can you, I, this is what we do. This is how this, you know, can you describe what we do? And then that way I just click on, type in exterior wash, but all the pre-filled information's there. Once we did that, customers started saying, we've never seen estimates that look so professional. So I'm like, oh man, I mean, I'm, I'm feeding off of this, right? Um, so right after we launched the website, uh, I'm gonna say it, it was in 2018, uh, August, Within a week, we got a call from uh, a construction company. They had built a new auto zone about two miles from our home. They found us on the website. They called. We got the job, man. We had to clean the, uh, we had to wash the parking lot. So, of course, you know, we asked, how did you hear about our company? Oh, I just saw your website. Oh, man. So, by 20... Eight, later in 2018, I would say somewhere around, no, actually, I'm sorry, 2019, right? So we already had Syngym. We, we had the website working, right? We got the business cards, okay? Beginning of 2019 season, our, our, uh, our lovely young lady, our, our freelance person said, Flip, you're growing faster than I thought you would. And she said, I've carried you as far as I can take you. You're going to need someone more professional to help get you where, you, where you're trying to go. She was honest. I hated to lose her. I was, you know, I was sitting here with my lip poked out, man. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to go back. But she was doing so much for us. She had me set up where if I would go out, I would close the sale. I could just feed her the information she was preparing the estimates. I mean, we were, we were clicking, okay? Um, and then we were closing jobs at a fast rate. When she left, I had to go and take over that, that, all that assignment. And I didn't know anything about SEO. What she, she would send me reports. She would explain everything, but that's not what I do. Right. right? right. Um, we didn't really take a, a, a dip in business because she left. It just became more frustrating in the office for Charlene and I trying to understand how to pick up those pieces. Um, and then, so we then hired a new marketing company. And since now we've had a, we have a more professional website built. Now we understand more about uh, how much uh, SEO works. I can tell you Facebook was another big one for me. Um, I'm, big on like I, I we set up a business Facebook page I don't know anything about running ads that's why we had to hire a, our new um, marketing company okay but I can tell you what was working for us I would go and say do a quick video you know we would go to a job site I would do a video and boost it I would put it up right and our phone would ring off the hook now I've heard, even when I came down to your class uh, this past year or, or last year, um, you know, a lot of guys were talking about not really, not boosting, but running more ads. So that's something we're going to do with our marketing team this year. But for us, the last two previous years, boosting a, a post work. And what it was doing was my customers were following our company. So a lot of people are on Facebook, right? right? So when they see whatever I'm posting, right? They're vouching for me, they're writing and they're saying, hey, they just watched our house. They did a phenomenal job. The phone would just bam, it would just ring off the hook. So, you know, we took advantage of that. That, that marketing for us worked really well. Their ROI was good. So you said that, um, that you guys, y'all done Facebook, you did um, send Jim. Now, just for people that don't understand what a radius bomb is, what essentially are you trying to do with a radius bomb? Okay. So what we did with send Jim, all right? Um, what happens now with send Jim for us is the way we set it up is it's coming through our CRM program, which is a customer factor. So after we're done, after we have washed a customer's home, it's, it's there. The customer itself is already set up on the fiber round. So they will get a, 
right after we're done, a thank you card, thank you for your business. Uh, uh, two weeks later, they'll get another card that may that'll say, uh, if you were happy with our service, please tell your neighbor, we have a good you know, referral program. Um, then they'll get a reminder card and then they will get there. It's time to get you know, whatever service that they had done, right? Okay. At the same time that I closed that invoice of that customer, 30 of their neighbors, of their surrounding neighbors, will get a send gym card as well. Hey, we just watched your neighbor's house, love to watch yours. And we, you know, and then our marketing team will go in and change that card. Okay. Now, with Radius Bomb, that's separate from what we do when the cards go out after we've completed a service. So I will say to the marketing team, listen, here's a, uh, a neighborhood over by the high school in Lewis, a lot of, a lot of larger homes, million dollar, $800,000 homes. I want to target just this specific area or just this specific zip code. So we will create a card. I'll even go as far as uh, to the neighborhood, take a picture of their um, community sign that sits out in front of their community, okay? Put that on the card. Uh, let's say I land a job. We land a job in that neighborhood. I'll go, I'll make sure I got about a two week lead time. So once I go out, take the picture, uh, we land a job. We will then upload, we will create a card, a send gym card, okay? We will go into the system and then we will take and we'll say, let's, let's hit, let's target 90 homes, okay? Um, they will look and see maybe they have pools, swimming pools in the back of their yards. Uh, you know, we could take a look and see, maybe see how their roofs are looking. And then we will just draw a box or a circle around those 90 homes, take the, take the card, the specific card, and then launch that and that mailer, right, to those 90 homes. So that's, for, that's what Radius Bomb gives you the ability to do, is to be able to target a certain area, a certain segment of homes or, and, and or businesses. So I, I use dope marketing, which is a little bit different, but has neighborhood blitz and some of the other tools that you're talking about. I, I really just want to, um, you know, go over the fact that whether you're using, you know, um, send gym or, or dope marketing or some other tool, the idea of saturating that area and getting multiple touches on a client is still stays true, no matter which service you're using. Absolutely. Um, so I always love to hear people's marketing plans and how successful they are because generally when I'm talking with somebody else, their marketing plan includes getting multiple touches on the same people and trying to drive home the same brand awareness that you guys have because it seems to be very strong for what you guys are doing. Yeah, actually, so I took a branding class uh, in, uh, I believe that was in uh, 2018 in Tampa. Uh, I want to say, what is his name? Guy Blackman. Uh, uh, I'm saying his name right. Okay. So, what, guy. yeah. All right. Awesome guy. It was an awesome class, man. And so what, what we've learned, what we learned from that class is when you're talking about branding is you keep everything the same. Like, you know, it starts with our shirt. Here is our logo. Okay. When we go out, uh, sometimes when we're just going into the grocery store, you know, I, I'll have on a shirt. Okay. Put, put the image out there. Then we use our send gym mailers, right? We touch. Um, once a month, we'll do like a, a drip mail campaign. Uh, I have my, I have a, we have, we've since hired an office coordinator. He will put together a, uh, uh, a send gym email mailer, okay? Kind of put some drip mail in, especially during our heavy season. Uh, more so even when we're not busy. During the peak season, People just kind of just tossing that stuff. But right about now is when we really get into drip mailing, okay? Um, and so we have multiple touches to stay in front of the customer. The other thing that we will do is when we got into gutter cleaning and window cleaning, those two services, what they did, you're always going to be doing window cleaning and gutter cleaning more so than you would wash someone's home, okay? You may wash that home maybe once every two years or so, okay? But uh, if we want to be in front of the customer more, uh, let me see, for example, we will use, uh, after we're done, 
washing the customer's home. We have, we leave them with a pen, a pad, no pad, I don't know if you guys can see that, and, and a pen, okay? Everybody needs a notepad and a pen. I'm now in your home, right? You're always gonna do it. So that, that image is there. Then here comes, you know, later down the road, here comes a Sinjin car. You know what, honey, we're not ready yet. Stick it on the refrigerator, it's right in front of you now, okay? And that's, so our, that's how we keep that image out there. I think the only one thing that I know we haven't really been big on um, is we use the yard signs, but a lot of times when we use the yard signs, especially in some of our neighborhoods, we have to take them, we're not allowed to leave them. But we haven't, in the beginning, we used to put the signs on the streets, on the corners. Um, we didn't, for us, I don't think we saturated it enough. Um, we didn't really know where to place them. We just kind of guessed at it. So we didn't really see um, a lot of, you know, return on investment on that. Uh, we would always ask folks, you know, how do you hear about us? They would tell us it was either Google, word of mouth, or your Sinjin car. Yeah, so I've, um, we, we use yard signs. Uh, I'll, I would agree with you that it's not, for me, it's not the most effective tool that we have, but I keep trying to use them because I feel like I just, it's like uh, when I started with door hangers. When we first started with door hangers, the first couple of times I put them out, I didn't really get a great response, but the more and more I kept hitting those customers yeah. with the same branding over and over again, like you said, it starts to come around to the peak season and you've been on their mind for months now. So yeah. when you do need work, you're, you're at top of mind. So yeah. that's what I think yard signs are going to do. And, and, you know, if you talk to some of these other people that, that use yard signs, I was just doing an interview with Brandon the other day and um, you know, Brandon was swears by yard signs. Like that's what he uses between that and boosting Facebook. So like, the, the one thing that we talked about not doing and the one thing that you and I can't seem to wrap our heads around, Brandon's being really successful with them. So yeah. Yeah, that's the way it works. That's the way it works. And you know, it, it, that kind of, sometimes you kind of got to know your area. Like if you look at where we live here in Lewis, Delaware, there's a lot of retired folks here. Delaware is already a small state. Now you get to Lewis, it's even smaller. And everything is about, you know, word of mouth. Uh, you only get one one shot. You mess up, man. They're going to they're going to talk. Um, I tell you the other thing that I know that has worked for us um, when it comes to closing the sale. Okay, and I haven't figured out how to get this to be more automated. Okay, so this is what I do. Um, we get a phone call. Customer says, "Hey, I'd like to see if somebody can come out and take a look." To you know, they always say the power wash my house. Okay, we take down their information. Uh, Ms. Flip will say, look, my, my husband will be out to see you guys within 48 hours, okay? I go over, take all the information, we come back, we prepare the, we prepare the estimate, we send it out via email, okay? Now, in between that time, all the other work that we've done, I've already got pictures, I've already have testimonies of, of uh, previous customers, right? I got a couple of videos to explain what is soft washing, because a lot of the older generation haven't heard of that. You ever notice when people call and ask to get their house washed, they go, I like to get a call to get my house power washed. But when we write soft wash, they're saying, oh my, what is that? Okay. Once I send the estimate, I know they open it because our CRM program, the customer factor, sends me an email response saying, hey, Flip, the customer has opened the email wait about 10 minutes, it'll be a good time for you to contact the customer, okay? So this is what I do. Once they open it, I'll wait about five minutes. I will actually type up a, an email to them. Hi, Miss Mary, um, this is Flip FNS Power Watson. I was able to prepare your estimate, send it out via email. If you have any additional questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to give us a call, leave the phone number. Thanks again for the opportunity. Have a wonderful day, right? I will then attach a video of, a, of us soft washing. It's just a quick little video, a testimony, uh, and a picture of a home. So it, it, it may depend on, and all of those pictures or videos will be different based on what type of home 
it is that I'm going after, right? So, you know, if we're down in, in Bethany, there's a house on the water, big three-story million dollar home, we've already done those. I want to let them know that we have done it, right? But sometimes people think thinking like, I want to get three estimates. But once they see the video or read the testimony of the, right? All of a sudden, bam, they hit the accept button. I said, okay. So that has been the number one killer. There's, there's, there's flips. I, I just came up with that. And once we, I started doing that, it has worked like a champ, man. They're like, oh, that's so fun. Hit the accept, honey. You know, and, and what I found, I didn't want to give them, they had already met me. The initial interview went well. I explained sometimes. I will, if, if I don't have but one truck out, I will take one of my trucks because the way we have our trucks set up, they're unique, they're different. They're, I'm not gonna tell you that they clean any better than anyone else's, but they, 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 they have never seen a pro cube. So I will promote the truck. And then there you go, right? One so. Hour. It's not that they won't get, if I'm going to charge somebody a premium price, it's not that they don't, they really want to get the other estimates. But once they see, they've already seen the estimate. The estimates are very well written, all right? Preformed, filled out, okay? Now here comes this, here comes this price. Oof, nice. Then here comes this email. Oh, you got to hire this company. Take it a fantastic job. Then there's this big house, right? And then they hit the accept button. So um, do you, when you're doing your pricing, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about how you structure it, when you give an estimate, do you give uh, like a one-time visit estimate? Do you do different packages and offer them different packages? How do you present it to them? We, we got away from the packages. We used to, when we first got into this, um, we were losing for us, because again, we're learning on the fly. Um, our packages were set up to lose money, okay? What we found, what I, what I found work for us is um, when I get to the house, when I get to the home or the business, let's just look at the homes, okay? I am there to build value. If I want to charge a customer a certain price, okay, um, if you go and you buy, you want to buy, uh, let's say, a Corvette, all right? Well, you're not going to just walk into the dealer and just say, oh, I like this color. No, you want to, uh, you know, it's a Corvette. It's, 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 it's a premium, it's a high-end car. And you want to look at the seats. You want to see the dash with the engine. Like, you know, if I'm going to spend $50,000, I got to make sure I'm getting the value. So when I'm at the customer's home, if I'm charged, if I want to charge fifteen hundred dollars, all right, to wash your home, your your back paver patio, I have to build that value. Tell them why, what it is that we're going to do for you when they see before they see that price. I never tell them a price when I'm standing next to them. I'm just telling them this is what we're going to do. This is our plant and property. This is what we do. Please take if you get a chance, take a look at our website. Uh, take a look at some of the, the, the things that we've done with our training and, and training of our staff. But I, I walk them around, I listen to the customer, and then tell them what we could do to uh, give them good curb appeal, okay? Um, once we get back to the, uh, that information gets back to the office, that's when we will then send that price out. Do we get every job? Not, you know, doesn't have, you know, you don't close every deal, but we do have a pretty good success rate. Where we live, people here, because most of them are retired, they want to see you. We don't do too well if, to price something over the phone. Either A, we have lost money because we get there and they didn't give us all the information. It was way too many windows, you know, for example. What happens if uh, someone has heavy landscaping? I get there, right? Um, if you have uh, heavy landscaping, for example, with uh, lighting, maybe a camera doorbell, uh, maybe these folks down here, they have 
you know, wood doors that are painted, I mean, they're high end. I, all, so what I do is when I go to do the estimate, what we do is we will list, you know, I'll tell them exterior soft wash to include outside gutters and sockets, okay? Then I'll put note and then write in red, text to cover um, camera doorbell, uh, note, heavy landscaping, note, uh, camera, uh, a camera and speaker above garage. The customer sees that and says, my God, he found all of those and they're going to protect. They're going to cover and tape or bag. A lot of times, you know, um, a lot of the companies, you know, competition will just send, they'll just say, hey, we're going to get a wash their own and this is what we're going to charge you. We build value and we're telling you what we're going to do and what we're going to protect and what's going to be the end result. There you go. Now you build that value. And once I started to see that, we then shifted our mindset and said, okay, we're going to target, you know, more uh, upper end homes. We will wash anything, but we set a price, okay? You know, maybe our, our, our average ticket price, we start at 305. Okay, now if someone uh, says that's too much, fine. You know, they won't ring the phone. Okay, but where we started to learn and to adapt and say, I think we can, here's a niche for us. We get calls for paver patios. Uh, Flip, we hear you're like really the only one that does paver cleaning and sealing. All right, so that is our niche. And then when I go to, if, even if I go to school, I will let my customer know, um, hey, I'm in school for paper. I got some new information for you. Uh, when I get back, I'm going to share. It's, it's some wonderful stuff that I'm learning here. I think we can do for your paper patio. They're not going anywhere. They're, that's it. This guy, my, this guy is serious. And so we let our customers know that we care. And we go to this. We're not just your average power washing company. We didn't get into this for beer and cigarette money, even though I don't smoke. You know what I mean? That's always my sales pitch. Huh? You know, just how we earn a living. And this is what we do. So y'all y'all eventually, y'all get out to um, my convention this past year, and we talked a little bit about systems. And that was something that was top of mind for y'all going into this year is yeah. getting your systems in place and making sure that not only you're effective, but you're efficient at what you do. Tell me a little bit about the systems that you've installed recently and how you're looking to continue to grow on that going into 2021. Okay, so what we did when we left from your amazing, and I'm not, I'm not saying this just because we're, it was a, that was a really good convention that you guys put on, man. I learned a lot. We had already been talking with our marketing, our new marketing company, okay? But what we didn't want to do, you know, Miss Flip and I, you know, we're not college grads, man. You know, we're learning on the fly. Um, when we hire a company, we still want to know a little bit about what you're going to do for me. Okay. So we, we understood that we had Syngen, but how can we best utilize it? Because we've, we've been underutilizing it. Okay. We have the, uh, uh, the customer factor, our CRM, and we have QuickBooks to integrate that runs um, the money part of it. Okay. Now, we, the yard, we, you know, yard signs, um, Facebook, okay? How can we, if, if, if uh, companies are saying, listen, you should, you know, you could probably take advantage of, instead of paying a lot of money with boosting posts, run, let's try to run ads. Um, if you're running, if you have a website built, First of all, our website was not professionally built until this year, um, and then we launched it. It has a lot more content. Um, you have a, you have landing pages. We can target commercial, residential, um, and then we understood you if you if you're trying to market your company, uh, if you're trying to get your brand out there, um, you have to spend money to make money. Okay you know, $200 on running ads through Google AdWords, you're, you're in about two days with a couple of clicks, that's, you're gone, your budget is done, okay? 
So a marketing company was able to help us to understand that you may have, you know, certain times of years when business is really going really well, you're going to have to spend a couple thousand dollars on those ads. And then what you do is you look at and you say, you know, in, in the beginning, we always said, well, man, that's a lot of money. But in a, in a sense, it's not. In some cases, that could be one job, you know, a commercial job you may do. So you can offset those costs. Okay. So our marketing company this year, what, we, what, we, what we're looking at now is we've hired a, an office coordinator. He's going to handle the incoming calls, the um, uh, estimates, commercial, residential, um, any of our mailing, uh, as far as uh, drip mail campaign that we may run, our marketing. Now, our, and then he coordinates, our office coordinator talks with our marketing team, the ones that's going to handle the uh, website, the Google AdWords, and then our, and our Facebook campaign. Because those things are going to, your Facebook uh, is always going to change depending upon the season of what you're doing, you know, early booking special, you want to start to run that around February. Uh, when you get in the summer, you know, you're talking about maybe, you know, getting those patios, those decks, you know, fall time, you got your fall campaign. So he works directly with our marketing team. So we're going to get into more um, with the, uh, this year, trying to see how Facebook ads work. Uh, I still have a job that I have to do because I'm the one that goes out Ms. Flip handles the, any concerns customers may have while we're doing a job. She checks on the guys and she collects the, the payments, okay? When the job is done, I'm, I work on sales. I'm more into the sales and uh, picture taking and or videos to um, target and market through Facebook. Facebook for us is big here. You always gotta keep that going. So. I can get to a job site, commercial, residential. I'll, I will go live, speak about that job, and get that and get that uploaded onto our Facebook. Right, keep that going. Um, if I'm taking any pictures, I get that back to our marketing team, and then we have to, our job is to your marketing team is only going to be as good as the information you feed it. You can't just get a marketer, have a website built, and think they are that's the end of the world. You can leave them. That it doesn't for us. We know that doesn't work that way. You have to, because your marketer, my marketer does not live here. She's out of North Carolina. I have to tell her, you know, show her what has worked for us in the past. And then it's her job to understand what, what is Flip's end goal? Where is he trying to go? If your marketer is not trying to understand who you are as a business owner, then that's not going to, that's not a good relationship. They got to you. So I spend a lot of time, like now, this time of the year, talking, just, just talking with my marketer so she can get a feel of what I'm looking for, where we're trying to go. What, where, what are we trying to target? Then when she runs, she, you know, every week she puts an ad up on our Facebook page and it's all about what we're looking. You know, when you look at, uh, our logo, FNS Power Wash. And Power Wash is, is written in cursive writing. That's more professional, more, right? So I want my content out there. It's not in the cartoon realm. Anything we put out, it's a little bit more professional, you know? And, and, but that has to be explained to your marketer until they get, get a hold of it. But that's, so this year, what we want to do in order to get two trucks, on the road full time with separate teams, you got to, you know, send has got to be a part of this equation. Okay. Um, a lot of what we have to make sure that we don't do is, is fall short on things that we are supposed to do. When we're done a job, make sure you close it out the right way, ask for that review, leave them with that notepad, leave that yard sign, even if they have to throw it away. You just write because people are going to be, uh, this is going to be another year where folks are going to be working from home. So folks are running up and down the street, taking that daily walk. You want to make sure 
that uh, your yard signs are sitting there. Um, listen, there's another thing that we do, um, and we're going to do a little bit more of this this year. When my when my texts show up at a at a at a house in the morning, okay, it's eight o'clock, they show up. I talk, I teach my text that I don't always want to throw business into someone's face at eight o'clock in the morning, okay? Nine o'clock. I don't want to do that. Okay. So I said, listen, when when you pull up to the house, the customer's home, grab a business card. We also have a pamphlet, okay, with a lot of our information on it. I'm just gonna hand you this pamphlet. Sir, my name is Flip, owner of FNS Power Wash. And listen, I just want to, this is my business card. I just want to let you know your neighbor hired us to wash their home. I just want to let you know this is why we're here. Uh, listen, thanks so much. Man. Have a great day. That's smart. Yeah. So it, it's less of a sales pitch and more of a, I'm just making you aware, but obviously it's going to seed that idea that they need to ask you more about your service. Right. Because then what they'll do is they'll go in the house and peep out the window. Oh, man, what are they doing? There you go. So, um, so a lot of these things have already, you know, sometimes we get it when we get into business, don't go stale. Keep those things going and improve uh, as you go along every year. You don't always have to recreate the wheel. Just don't go stale. Just because it worked last year, you can't sit on your laurels. You got to kind of keep it going. And, and so that was probably the one thing that I know that happened to us this year was when, we, when the young lady left and we were here trying to pick up the pieces, uh, and before we hired our office coordinator, um, we, we were struggling. So we stopped doing some of the small things that would drive business. But this year, with having a, a, the office coordinator, now a professional uh, marketing company, people have roles and responsibilities is what they have to do. Charlene now knows what she's doing. Flip has his with sales. I'm more... I, I'm more of the, of the, let's say, the center of a basketball team, okay? I stay, I'm in the middle. Um, and so they can always ask me questions, and I kind of direct them where they need to be. I was off the truck probably by 20, even though we started 2017, by, by midway through 2018, I was off the truck. Uh, my job was to get to bring the business in. I knew sales was was me okay and so as long as i'm in the middle i can direct what's going on i can stop by and see the guys see what talk to miss flip see what's happening and then also if i need to talk to the marketing team so that's where we're going to, i think we're going to be much more efficient for the first time this year yeah it's so important to have all of the right people in the right places when you're doing this. And I know that that sounds like, you know, a very general or vague statement, but it's, it's very true. Like when you have a, an important piece go down and you're trying to pick up what they dropped, um, yeah. you, you can't always juggle all of the pieces and those little things that you do make a huge difference in your company over the course of a year. Uh, when you're going back and you're looking at, you know, how consistent was I with business? How consistent did we schedule? How consistent was our revenue growth compared to year over year? And yeah. these little things make a huge difference at the end when you start adding it all up. So um, yeah. I'm glad to hear that you guys got, got an office coordinator and y'all are getting him. It's, it's a, 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 right before spring. So, I mean, to bring them in, to bring all, an office coordinator in the, in the wintertime instead of waiting until you get busy is also just forward thinking on your part. Yeah, absolutely. I think what happens is a lot of times when we, you know how how this goes, you bring on, whenever you add uh, someone to your business that you had to hire, you know, your bottom line number, your profit starts to go down, but you have to look at the short term and then your long term goal. Okay. And so without the office coordinator, when we get in, we're going into year five. We cannot survive another year in trying to grow. If you got two trucks sitting there, you got to, okay, so you got two trucks, commercial residential. 
you know, you, you, you got to figure out, okay, how much do I want to bring in off of East Trump? What do we need to, right, to operate our company? And so we knew we needed to bring in pieces, hire people to do things that you can't do. That has always been my mantra, okay? And so he was probably the most important part of this whole puzzle because he was able to teach Charlene and I some things that we just didn't know. You know, how do we run our business? Um, we now have um, uh, training manuals for our guys, okay? Before we would just bring them in, you know, kind of go through training on the fly. Well, now we have an office, now they sit down, and here they go. So now we have. Yes. Okay. No, so yes. Now we can hold our guys accountable. So we bring them in, we train them, they have a manual, they know what is, when you put on this uniform, you're representing the company. You know, we explain that to the guys, get them trained before we uh, put them in the truck. So the offers coordinator helped us to understand how to structure and run a legitimate company. So he was very important. That was the most important part of that puzzle. That's awesome, Flo. Well, um, look, it's come up on our hour. I know that you'd sit here and talk to me for a couple more hours if I let you about pressure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I can hear her off to the side. I don't know why she doesn't want to be on camera. Yeah, you want to get in here, you got to come here and say hello. <laughs> this is Flo. Yeah. The queen of power washing. All right. Um, yeah, guys, I really appreciate y'all just coming on and talking with me and uh, doing the interview and, and sharing so much knowledge and experience that you guys have had over such a long period of time. Um, so thank you for, for showing up and, and yeah. showing out tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you in the future. Uh, congratulations to you, man, and much success to you and your business. Yeah, thanks, guys. I will, uh, I'll be talking to y'all later try to figure out now all I got to do is figure out how to make this stop recording. <laughs>